Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Today I'm very excited to be looking at a kit that many people have been anticipating from ICM in 148 scale. It is of course the B26B Martin Marauder and ICM are the first mainstream company to tool a kit of it in this scale. So let's go ahead and get this box open. First the top opening outer and then the sturdy flip top box underneath. Inside we can see we have the usual full box ICM provides us with. In this case there are two large self-sealing plastic bags containing all the sprue frames. Even in the bag you can see just how chunky the B26 fuselage is with its almost completely circular cross section. Under these bags we have the printed materials starting with the instruction booklet. Inside this is the large decal sheet and protective cover. And then we have this bonus insert, a folded full year calendar featuring the B26 box art. This is a really nice little addition which ICM didn't have to do and it just shows what sort of a company they are. I'll be looking at the instructions in detail shortly so I'll set them aside for now. At the bottom of the box is the usual ICM paint leaflet showing both their entire paint range and also the paint sets they have to enable modelers to buy what they need for a kit in just one set. Now the instructions for the B26 are in standard ICM format. Box art and short description at the front top, followed by paint descriptions and coding, and then the newer edition of the QR code for the animated 3D YouTube instructions below. Opening the booklet up, we have a full four pages covering the sprues contained in the box. Interestingly, the transparency includes two styles of nose and windscreen, indicating future variants, something ICM is very good at. The construction steps are all clearly laid out in ICM's usual isometric CAD style, with paint references and decal placements called out where necessary as normal. In addition, of course, you do have the video for any areas that you want a different perspective on or for any clarification. You can see a full offensive load of bombs and defensive armaments are included here. The instructions also call out the weight to be added to the nose, because the Marauder was a tricycle geared aircraft of course, and it's quite a bit, 50 grams in total. You can see we have options for open or closed bomb bays, Now I'll also call out throughout for any differences between any of the included schemed aircraft. At the end here is ICM's party piece with the included paint mask templates, and here they've also gone and given some pretty comprehensive views of exactly which of these go where, which is great. We then have the full colour paint and decal scheme views, one in olive drab as depicted on the box, and the two in natural metal with colourful nose art. The last one depicted is the big hairy bird, which has the large decals that we'll look at shortly. So here is that large decal sheet. Here we have the instrument decals for the cockpit, However, the majority of the sheet is taken up by the large and flamboyant nose art for the two natural metal aircraft. The sheet is excellently printed with no registry or colour issues anywhere. Colour density is good, and ICM decals are thin and adhere well, so I'm very happy with this sheet. Okay, let's look at the plastic. 
I'm starting here with the main frame carrying the two fuselage halves. Now you do get 8 frames of grey plastic in this kit, plus the transparent frame for 9 in total, so you're getting a lot in the box. The fuselage of the aircraft is very reflective of current ICM toolings, being smooth and featuring subtle but crisp engraved and raised detail as shown at the rear of the aircraft here. The internal faces do show all the ribbing too, and there are positive placement areas for some of the interior consoles and such. The plastic is smooth and blemish free, and there are some complex curves in there too. Onto the starboard wing sprue that holds upper and lower surfaces, vertical stabiliser and rudder, as well as several of the internal bulkheads. These latter feature some very nice moulded detail and there is subtle fabric effect on control surfaces. Flipping the sprue we can also see further detail on the other side of the forward fuselage floor. The port wing frame has a similar layout including lower and upper surfaces and the two chunky engine nacelles for those powerful double wasps. You also get all of the associated bulkheads for these. The last flight control surfaces frame has the horizontal stabilizers, which are at a distinctive acute angle on the B26, and ICM have tackled this by giving us a single upper piece with that angle dialed in, which is a great solution. There are also more bulkheads here, framing the bomb bay and giving spars for the wings to slot onto. There are also other pieces of detailed superstructure here, and more subtle effects on those control surfaces. Flipping the sprue you can see some of the fuselage pieces have detail on both sides too, dependent on their location. We then have the engine sprue for those Pratt & Whitney's. Cylinder banks, pushrod guides and exhaust collector rings are all here. As well as some machine guns for good measure. Several bombs are shown here and there are also some very fine detail pieces. The large four-bladed prop, gearbox, main undercarriage tyres are split and have separate hubs, which is great for painting and I prefer this on most kits of this scale. Detail looks great across the front and rear of this frame, which of course you do get two of, one for each engine. Next is the first of our fiddly bits frames, this one featuring everything from flight surfaces, undercarriage, and a whole host of internal detail items. Flipping the sprue over, you can see the detail on the bomb racks, and the impression this sprue gives is one of ICM's usual detail and finesse, including the instrument panel. The last grey frame is a little smaller and has all of the remaining detail items, including a lot of machine guns. We also get things like the bomb bay door actuators and rack detail, and a whole host of further small and finely cast detail items. The last frame we need to talk about is the clear plastic. ICM have not only bagged this, but have also put a protective foam wrap around it too to further protect it, which is fantastic. Let's get that open and take a look. As usual, ICM's clear plastic is very clear, and these parts all look great. As I mentioned in the instructions, there are two versions of the Agaival bubble nose and windscreen, and I'm looking forward to future variants of this aircraft that ICM will release. Now at this point of the video, I just want to thank all of my Patreon and YouTube channel members. 
I mentioned that I was going to put this mid-roll in future videos in my prior video on this, and I had to add a few more names onto the list since then, so thank you so much to all of you. Your help at this time is very much appreciated. If you are able to become a channel member, it really does contribute a huge amount to me being able to keep the channel going, and at the moment it's my preferred platform for support. And let's take a close-up view of those sprues, starting with the transparencies. For these, I'll conduct my usual scalpel test. And of course it passes 10 out of 10 as you're able to read Swan Morton through all of the pieces, even the heavily curved nose. I honestly think ICM produce the clearest transparent pieces in the industry right now. They should seriously consider making some transparent hulled aircraft and tanks for display, I think. Onto the small fiddly bit sprue now, and you can see the brownings for various positions here, and the amount of detail included on the complex control column. Here's the detail of those Bombay racks. more machine guns, flipping to the back you can see the Bombay door and control column detail on this side, as well as more details of this side of these items, and just in general the level of moulding finesse on display in these items here is great. Here we can see the front tricycle landing gear strut. I think this is the inner flap detail right here. One of the pilot seats. Here's the instrument panel, and also one of the Browning MGs. Detail here of the door opening mechanisms. Side panels and bomb racks. And here the internal turret detail. Those side panels from this side of the sprue internal fillets for the wing roots, here are the collector rings, pushrod guides and cylinders for the double wasps, the engine cowlings are one piece items with a lot of depth which must be difficult to create in the mould. The bombs are more engine detail parts. That big old propeller to get the most from those big powerful engines, its span is as long as my finger here. Those tyres I mentioned before, as well as the wheel bay doors. These are the separate hubs, showing just how intricately they've been moulded. Moving on to the interior items on the next sprue, you can see just how much detail is included here. It should be easy to make this look really good.
the separate horizontal stabilizer pieces. And this is that clever angle piece, which still has excellent recessed detail on it. More internal Bombay bulkhead detail here, as well as some subtle surface detail on this fuselage section. This shows the crisp yet subtle moulding, engraving and detail on the main wing and associated surfaces. This bit of old grass or dirt is entirely my introduction, not ICM's. By contrast, they have this very nice detail on the upper wing surface. Back to interior pieces, and these are the cockpit floor sections showing the detail and hatch. More restrained fabric effect here on the rudder and again across the wing surfaces. Before we come back to the bulkheads where the amount of engraved moulded detail is demonstrated. Onto the main fuselage, and here I want to show just how thin but crisp the panel lining is on this model, using my scalpel. Moving across the model, you can see how smooth the plastic is, which really helps to show off that detail, and also differentiate external areas from joints. Again, towards the rear, we have raised detail, and some complexity in the curve of the profile section and gunner station. We see all of that once again on the other half, but I'll show you anyway as you're seeing from the bottom rather than the top towards you. Turning the frame over, we can see that internal moulded detail and the clear attachment areas for the side panels and other items. That continues the length of the fuselage, but especially in the rear section. Well, I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone that this is an incredible kit of a long overlooked subject that played an important part in the American campaigns of both the Pacific and European theatres, where it proved to be an accurate and highly survivable medium altitude bomber, when used appropriately, in Europe. On first examination, it appears that ICM have executed this kit in its normal, highly detailed fashion, and given us an interesting range of finishes in this first release of what I expect will be several iterations. The B-26 was used by the RAF and Commonwealth forces as well as the US, so there's plenty of scope here too. I'm certainly looking forward to building this in short order, and if you're looking for something to build for my group build, Slava Ukraini, detail of that linked in the video description below, or for the upcoming anniversary of D-Day, then I'd suggest this is an excellent choice. I therefore don't have any hesitation in giving this my highest recommendation, and although I received this example from ICM for review for free, that hasn't influenced my opinion in any way, and I'd definitely buy this kit. The RRP of the kit is $74.99 in the UK, though it is both available for around the £65 to £70 mark in many shops, and it's also going to be a very substantial model. It's very similar in size and detail to the Airfix 124 scale Spitfire, which is of course £20 more, which I think says everything you need to know, because that kit is also an extremely good buy. Now I just need to get some in stock in the shop. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. 
If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modeling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video. Thank you.